it's raining big wet rainstorm blew in last night at about midnight and uh it's been pouring rain all night but uh, that's really good. It gives me an opportunity to find out if there's any leaks in the Palomino HS650, which uh, I just woke up in. So I'm pretty happy about it so far. It's super comfortable. That bed is great. Uh, it's a Serta coil mattress, so it's quality. And, uh, you know, the truck doesn't move a whole lot so you're inside of this thing and you kind of forget that you're on a pickup truck until you open the door and you climb out <sighs> sorry I just woke up Time to start the day. Yeah. In case uh, anybody was wondering, I do actually work with helicopters. I am a commercial helicopter pilot. So these are some of our projects right now for the off season. You can hear the rain pounding on the tin roof. wet out. Well, it's still raining, so I tucked the camper underneath the door of the hangar. I have to install my house battery. Um, I went out and picked up a Lifeline Marine Grade AGM. Um, I'm excited about it. It was uh, a very high dollar battery. Apparently they're made locally here, like 10 miles from here. So the small town battery shop I picked it up from has factory seconds, which are like blemished, a dot of extra glue or something on the casing. Uh, all the same components, all the same uh, features of a battery, which is funny to think, but batteries are pretty complex these days. Anyways, $120 for a Lifeline 12 volt marine grade AGM battery. So very excited about that. I'm gonna open up the uh, battery compartment in the Palomino, install it so that it's ready to go for this weekend's uh, inaugural christening slash uh, adventure. We're gonna take it up to the uh, El Capitan State Park, kind of north of Santa Barbara, California. So, open it is. So here it is, the AGM battery from Lifeline. As you can see, $120, it's got a six month warranty, which still is pretty good for uh, any battery, but this is a completely sealed lead acid 12 volt battery. Um, I need to go get the hardware for the terminals. I really like how it's got these really durable, heavy, but uh, rope carry handles versus like the plastic one that usually kind of comes across the top of like the old school, you know, CarQuest marine grade batteries. Um, these things are like the bee's knees, the Cadillac of batteries, if you will. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. It's brand new to me. I mean, as is the entire Palomino HS650 camper. Uh, they sold it to me without a battery. Oh well. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely excited about putting in a really good house battery so that I'm not worried about potentially draining my truck battery and then being stranded somewhere. Okay, so that dropped into place really painlessly. But uh, I'm glad that I have a sealed lead acid battery versus one that's got ports to allow for filling it because um, just right now I uh, had to tilt it to kind of make it pass through which 
I'm assuming it's this piece of raw copper here where my hand is. Uh, maybe for a thermocouple or something. I don't know. It goes to the junction box. Anyways, um, yeah, it's nice to have a batter that you could mount on its side or upside down even, and it's still going to function properly. And it's not going to leak battery acid all over the place. That would be a bad thing. Okay, everything appears to be working normally. I'm just tightening down the terminal posts, or I guess they're studs because they're threaded, but uh, I got the radio going. I'm going to function all the lights, see if everything tests properly, and then uh, we'll cover it back up and call it good. So, this is why we double check stuff. I already neglected to connect to ground, so. I'll uh, disconnect it and try it again. All right, it's all properly hooked up. Got the solar pre-wire hooked up there to the positive, and then the pre-wire and the grounds hooked up for the negative. Um, so far, so good. I'm happy with it. So, fortunately there is a bit of water. So, it's been raining like all day pouring, pounding rain. I just noticed a little bit of wetness on the countertop here, which explains this piece of trim that's been popped out that I've noticed. And a little bit of wetness down here. So there has been some water penetrating through the system. Not a lot, just a few drips, but definitely concerning. Um, after everything dries back out, I'm gonna hop back up there and I'm assuming it's coming from this seal here on the window. Hop back up there and seal it up. So here's my little checklist. For this weekend's adventure, beer. Got it. Aluminum foil picked it up. Paper towels got them. I need to get a knife still, like a good prep knife. Uh, picked up a bag of charcoal. I'll pick up some firewood. Got the splitting axe in the Jeep. Chairs got them. Flip flops got them. Bungee cords picked up. Tarp. And I grab that. And a book. So, getting ready for uh, getting out of here tomorrow and go enjoy the beach. Can't wait. I'm learning what to do with uh, the lack of space in this thing, but that's okay. So I've got these little drawers in here. It's my closet. And then over here is my kind of like sock and t-shirt drawer. So what I'm doing right now is rolling shirts to put in one of these plastic bins to uh, you know, be easy access for my day to day. Just kind of like button down plaid type shirts. So yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but uh, it's pretty well set up so far. Like I've got, you know, a comforter. This mattress is incredibly comfortable. It's huge. Uh, my wife and I slept in here one night over the holiday uh, just to kind of try it out, and it's 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 perfectly comfortable for two grown adults. Uh, and the fact that you know it's limited in space is great because it frees you up. It allows you to carry less things. But um, it is nice to have at least you know two weeks worth of clothes. Uh, I just keep a mesh bag going for my dirty laundry. So, you know, it is what it is. But that's how I live my life 98% of the time. Uh, I live out of a 12 day bag or 14 day bag, however you want to look at it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of my day to day. So I'm perfectly okay with living that lifestyle. Um, it's not for everybody, but uh, moving into a truck camper full time like this, uh, definitely necessitates that sort of a lifestyle. Not a whole lot of room for superfluous clothing items. But luckily I have a little bit of storage that I can put like heavy jackets. I've got like a heavy down parka that obviously you know, I won't carry in here regularly. Uh, and some other things, some ski clothes and some boots and stuff that I can stash and then um, you know use as, as the climate dictates. But for the most part, like, Almost everything I own right now is uh, 
either in this camper or in this truck. So that's, that's an interesting concept. I think I found another leak. There's a dark spot right here. It's moist. Uh, a big heavy rain is very telling. Yeah, there's moisture on my finger of uh, the weak spots in any system. So I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. Kind of sad that there's already two two leaks. So as you can see, there's a little bit of wetness on the screen. So um, just things to address as I learn the ins and outs of my new domicile. Good thing I don't live in a super rainy environment. If I lived in like Seattle, uh, might be tough. But California is generally pretty dry. So, should be all right. Currently there is a microwave <clears throat> that's been installed here by the previous occupant slash owner. They just piped the 110 cord down through the trim and everything and they plug it in right here. Um, I don't particularly like microwaved food. I don't do it very frequently, so I'd like to take that out. Um, it just doesn't make sense for me. I, I think I'll be removing this television too. It's just a cheap Vizio on a swing arm, but um, it swings around and that bothers me. Like it's not mounted correctly where the little retaining pin properly actuates. So. Won't be watching a lot of TV in this. Um, you know, I don't expect to be hooked up to shore power very frequently. Uh, it's just not my, not my lifestyle. So I think that uh, these kind of are established for older folks who, <laughs> who uh, want to go to campsites and stuff. Um, sorry, I might edit this part of the video out. I think I probably just insulted half of my. Uh, viewership but no honestly that's that's the case um, TV and a microwave are really two things that don't belong in a camper like you shouldn't be going somewhere to microwave food or watch TV um, in my opinion like it's just it, it's not the point the point of that is to do those things at home like home home this is home for me but this radio right here, that's all I need. A couple speakers, a little bit of reggae tunes. Who could ask for more? So, bye bye TV, bye bye microwave. Bye. <laughs> this is my library right now. <laughs> so, 100 classic hikes in Southern California with a map of the Angeles National Forest, which is cool because that's. Oh, I was about to say, that's, I haven't looked in this book for months, it's been in storage, and it's El Montanan. I'm headed to El Capitan, but that does look very nice. I'll have to find that one. Beach at Smuggler's Cove. It's secluded and pristine. But anyways, uh, these are the books that I just pulled out of storage. So we got 100 Classic Hikes, California Backroads, Four-Wheel Drive Trails. That looks fun. 100 Deadly Skills, The Survival Edition by Clint Emerson. This was a uh, gift from my wife a few years ago for Christmas. Um, I have read it cover to cover. There is a lot of good information in here. So that's that. And then I have a journal, which was also a gift. I haven't written it much, but I intend to. And then I picked this up last year, the Australian Slang Dictionary. Uh, some really good stuff so um, you know I'm working on the Australian lifestyle I really uh, applaud our friendly neighbors to the southern hemisphere for their just outlook on life and uh, a lot of the guys that I follow on YouTube are Australians uh, Ronnie Dahl um, Andrew White st. Pierre uh, isn't Australian per se he's English or South African, but lives in Perth, Australia. Um, and some other folks, uh, the four-wheel drive action guys, 
they're all super cool, man. They, uh, yeah, they've, they've got it figured out. So if um, I could all aspire to be as half as cool as they are, uh, it's a shout out to all you guys. Uh, it's been an inspiration. So I hope you see this and uh, get inspired that I'm inspired. The library packed in nicely against a couple of MREs. Uh, what's that we got here? Cheese tortellini, menu number 13. Just kind of like the shit out of luck, up a creek without a paddle, uh, a little stash. I got two MREs and a little block of lifeboat rations. Um, plus my books. So there's some information there. But I was just thinking about this journal. I'm gonna make it a habit. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna introduce that idea to my wife when I see her this weekend that uh, we should fill out a one or two page journal entry for all the adventures that we have and um, you know make that this book our, uh, our year of 2018, 2019 and into the future. I'm gonna still keep this stupid big hunk of crap there because I'm too lazy to pull it out right now, but I will get motivated to do so in the future. Uh, this is something else that I find important first aid kit so I'm gonna tear through this one it's actually a surplus kit we just got some um, surplus Blackhawks the date on it is still really recent um, so it expired you know essentially a few months ago the medical equipment inside of it is still perfectly good um, I've got a smaller uh, Molly style individual first aid kit that I'm gonna transfer the bits into but uh, I think it's important for all of us to have at least a little bit of medical equipment. Uh, I've got a med kit in the truck and then some of my backpacks and stuff, but uh, definitely really important to carry basic first aid stuff. You never know what you're gonna run to or you, know, you might chop your finger off with a really sharp knife while you're camping and that's gonna suck, but it happens, so. Um, I recommend it and I'll, I'll do a, a feature on that I'll just do all first aid kits that I have show you guys what I'm working with but uh, it's it's really important so keep that in mind all right so the sacrificial anode or diode it's made out of zinc probably works the same as a boat in salt water um, that right there is the uh, port that it goes into and you can kind of see it's a little gummed up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of run a bristle brush in there and try and clean it up a little bit. I want to see if the water heater works so that I can have a nice hot shower after I get out of the ocean because I'm going diving. I'm going to go spearfish and lobster dive if, uh, <laughs> if the visibility permits, but I'm excited about this trip. Wish I had a stiff bristle brush. This is kind of like a polymer bullshit brush, but that's what I got. So that's what's gonna work. I've got this one's copper brush. It's kind of tough to get into those threads. And threads in. That's a plus. I mean, the threads work. Okay, I've got the copper bristle brush basically jammed all the way into this bung hole. And uh, you know what? It's actually doing the trick. So let's pull it out. Uh, you probably can't see how beautiful it looks in there, but it's starting to get really clean. So that's a bonus because the anode wouldn't slide in. It was too tight. All right, I got it all finger tight. Let's try the wrench. That yeah, feels good. Hope it doesn't leak. I didn't have any Teflon tape. No, not a plumber. My helicopter pilot. But uh, hopefully it's got the proper amount. Teflon tape, you can kind of see the white on the threads there. Just gonna 
assume that that's gonna work. Hope it does. It went in there nice. Probably got about two thirds of the threads. Didn't feel like it was cross threaded or anything like that. Uh, this is a breaker bar. The only thing that I could find that was right size, and you know what? That's not even the right size. It's a one and one eighth. This is probably a one and a quarter, so it's a little sloppy actually on the head of that. But enough to snug it down. I'll fill it with water and see so we find out. Flame is a good thing, right? Things rocking. Topping off the water tank. It's exciting, it's all working. Well, it hasn't leaked yet, but it's not perfect. So, <laughs> uh, I'm refilling the 15 gallon tank with the hose. The burner's running. I set up this drain line off of the sink, what I thought was a sink, right? Comes down to here and terminates. Here's a shower nozzle. That's getting full. Hold on. It's gonna start to spit. Okay. So, check this out. I turn on the water pump. Water pump running. Uh, it's spitting out the drain line. So, something's wrong. This water is warmish. Turn off the water pump and ceases. So something is plumbed in backwards. <laughs> I figured it out. I was like, what is this black threaded cap to, right? Hmm. Seems about mm, half inch threads or whatever that is. So this Suppose a drain line that I set up is not a drain line at all. Stupid me. Uh, that's the winterizing line to pump all the liquid out of the tank when it's time to winterize the RV unit. Right? So this is meant to be capped so that when it's capped, it pumps regularly. So. I'm gonna take off my sweet drain line, which I set up. I thought that was out of the kitchen sink so that it would just drain to the ground, gray water. No such luck. You live, you learn. Okay, it works. Uh, water heater burning. Hot water nozzle. Water comes out of it. Warm enough. That's like could shower with that especially after coming out of a cold ass ocean so I'm gonna call that a win I don't want to waste all my gas because it's the only gas I got so I'm gonna let this thing operating as it should. I'm gonna turn the gas off and just connect it to shore power for the evening. It's pretty late already, but uh, we should be in good shape. I'm gonna pre-cool the refrigerator and then um, hook it up to gas for the trip up. And then run on gas for the weekend. Hopefully uh, I don't run out. I ran it a little bit last weekend. Didn't fill it. Kind of want to like push this thing, see where it goes. But so far everything's working properly, despite my fallbacks with silly little things. But that's okay. That's part of the learning process of any new piece of equipment. We'll see you guys in the morning.